What's up guys, Ivan here with GetIvan.com and in this video we're going to be talking about the Scrapebox internal email scraper. And I'm going to go through how I scrape emails using Scrapebox. Now, don't let's not confuse this with the email scraper premium plugin. This is not a tutorial on the premium plugin that Scrapebox offers for email scraping. This is just for how to scrape emails using the, the basic functionality that are, is already included in the in the root scrape box install. And uh, it's something to keep in mind, guys, also in terms of the premium plugins, I've been told directly by the scrape box support that those plugins are made using the base scrape box um, functionality. So there's they're offered to make certain processes more convenient, but to my knowledge, you can do all of those things that the premium plugins uh, provide, or, or a lot of those things, maybe not all those things, but certainly a lot of those things uh, by just using the, the root scrape box install. Okay, so um, let's head over to my one of my VPS servers here. Hopefully, yeah, my camera's still there. Um, I like to use this instead because it's uh, less taxing on my system resources. So I grabbed some of these, um, uh, first of all, in terms of, I like to use the, the harvested URLs. So I like to do a, a general search scrape, right? And then I like to just simply use this grab and check, grab emails by crawling sites. So you can also use grab emails from local list. So if you, that's a little bit different. What that does is, it, is if you've already grabbed the emails from someplace, then the local list functionality will, will actually grab just the email string from the list of, from that local list that has a bunch of other data in, incorporated into it. So this this first option is really useful for it when you just need to have a simple list from you know a bunch of data you already have. But then the second option is actually for scraping emails from a whole bunch of websites. So you can see there's a bunch of other things here like grab phone numbers, comments, meta, you know, all this stuff. There are some other useful things here in the add-ons you might find, but mainly it's just in this grab check area. So in, in a sense, you could just say, okay, that's all I, all I need to know, let's let's go. But there's a couple other things I wanted to share in terms of you know how the best ways to, to uh, build your little uh, URL list in the harvester. And then also let's talk about the custom data grabber here at some point as well, because using this custom data grabber, you can, um, you can harvest all kinds of information, not just emails explicitly or phone numbers, but uh, all kinds of other things. If you look at phone numbers, for example, oh, sorry, we'll look at that in a second. If you look at the phone numbers uh, uh, utility that they've created, you can actually look at the uh, the footprint that they've that they use uh, for that activity, and it's a I think it's a form of rejects. So uh, re rejects stands for regular expression. Um, but, you, but I don't even use rejects in this stuff yet. I mostly just use some basic uh, footprints. But let me grab some of these URLs here. So this, or let me think. Uh, so in terms of in terms of the, the keywords, now you can scrape a list of keywords. You can paste a list of keywords from someplace. But one of the best ways that I've found to do things is to take a root keyword. So let's say, for example, here, let me look at my scrapes archive. Let me find a niche here. Um, roofing. Let's say I wanted to find a whole lot of things in roofing. I would take, I would take the the root keyword like roofing, and I would use a keyword multiplying tool. So let me go to my my browser here. I would use something like this keyword multiplier, and then a list of say the top five thousand cities in the USA. Oops, clicked on the wrong one. You don't want your list to be too big because then it, it becomes, it takes too long to process, becomes more difficult to manage and you don't really get as much from it, right? But um, somewhere between a thousand and, you know, a 5,000 or so of the top cities is pretty good. But basically a good way to go about it is to grab the top cities and then you can come into, uh, you have to do a, a bit of cleaning here with something like this text cleaner move this over here for now. And uh, actually, let me grab more cities. So we'll go ahead and do this little example so y'all can see exactly what I'm talking about. 
I'll put links to these tools in, in the description, by the way. So let me just go ahead and grab all 5,000. It's a little bit laggy. And we'll paste them into this list cleaning tool. And then we will go to spaces, remove extra spaces and tabs and clean text. And that'll drop all those extra spaces out. So then I'll grab these cities, drop them in here. And then we'll do something like roofing, for example. And click go. They must not have all pasted for some reason. Well, that's okay. We'll just we'll just leave this as it is. But um, you take these keywords, and because they're all like a like a core niche, you want to find a niche that has a lot of searches per month nationally in the USA, right? And then just mash those cities together. And when you do the search, of course it basically plugs those in, into whatever search engine you're using and then uh, gives you a, t a whole lot of local results. So if I was, it, you know, wanting emails to do outreach to a bunch of roofing companies, then this would be a really good way to go about it because you're, you're using Scrapebox, you're, you're telling Scrapebox to search for, you know, basically a bunch of services in these specific localities. And that's how I've, I've been able to get a lot better results that way. Um, this is where you'll set the number of results that are scraped. So you could say 10 results and that would just do the first page. Um, anything beyond about the first 50 is a, a lot muddier than usual, but that's up to you. You can go first hundred results, first thousand, it's whatever, right? Now, if you wanted to, de depending on your use case, you know, you could click on platforms and then you could select, you know, specifically Word WordPress blog footprints if that's something you wanted to do, or some of these other ones. Um, in some cases, it, it's it's beneficial to do that so you can kind of keep it simple, you know. I've definitely found in some, in some past stuff and things I've done that you can, if you have a gigantic list of keywords, like 100,000 keywords, then this can make it a lot faster. And then, you know, you're really just kind of hitting uh, those more local businesses, right? Rather than accidentally spending too much time scraping blog posts, you know, from, you know, big companies. And then you can repurpose that list into say uh, your contact form submission uh, tests if you wanted to do something like that also. So um, let's go ahead and just do a custom footprint and we'll start harvesting now. There's a whole lot of junk here. I know that can be confusing. I just, these days with the proxies that I'm using, uh, I just like to use Bing and Bing is oftentimes scoffed at a lot compared to Google, but I've done a lot of, I've done a number of tests and the, I would say the majority of results are very similar, you know? So there's nothing explicitly magical. If you're scraping tons and tons of information about scraping from Google, um, if you had, if you had better rotating proxies then you could do that and you could certainly test it and see how it does. But I'm going to go ahead and say we don't want to use server proxies. I don't know if this has been repaired yet. At some point, they they were non-functional, so I haven't used them in a while. And I, and, and support did confirm to me that they were non-functional uh, a couple months back. But I've got proxies enabled here. Enable auto load proxy. So you might want to, if it doesn't say enabled up here, you might want to load them in from down here somewhere. Anyways, I'm going to click start. And I'll probably just skip ahead here, but you'll see that because of the number of proxies I'm using, uh, it, it goes really, really quickly. There's a the video I did just right before this one about Scrapebox proxies. So check my channel if you want to get information on that. And as you can see here, I've already har harvested over 20,000 URLs. So let's skip ahead to the end. Let's take a look at the uh, results here. Sometimes you'll get uh, misses and um, just ignore them or, you know, you're welcome to do a couple sweeps on the same scrape and maybe see if you can combine the results. But uh, go ahead and e exit to main here. And you can see we got almost 100,000. That was just from a list of 2,500 keywords. So if you add more locations, you know, you'll get more results. Um, some cases you might want to clean like these things that are not true URLs. So 
we could go remove URLs not containing HTTP and that cleans it up a bit. Oh, well, it should have removed it. Not sure what the issue is. That, oh, I see. Let's just go ahead and shift click these. It's not that many. But you don't want to, you want to make sure that you don't have remove uh, duplicate URLs. There. Um, you don't want to remove your duplicate URLs because in some cases there are things like these whos.com or maybe even yellow pages or other types of directories. And so like here's the Better Business Bureau. Uh, I don't know if you can grab emails from there. I haven't even checked there, but you want you don't want to scrape the dupes because, you know, those are, well, I guess you don't want to, you don't want to remove duplicate domains is what I meant to say. I guess you could, we could go ahead and remove duplicate URLs. We're not going to get the same. We're not going to get any different data from the URLs. So that cut the list down. Sorry. I had a, had a brain, a brain blip there that cut the list down by about 20 K. But then all you got to do is just go to grab check, grab emails by crawling sites. Okay, before we do that, let me touch briefly on the custom data grabber. Let's go to create, edit, custom data grabber. So something I did at one point was for a real estate site called Core Koran. And um, uh, if we, when you go into this area, you can set this stuff in the manner that you see here. And then, and, and here's the connections and some other things like save the URLs with the data, depending on whether or not you need to track things or not. But once you do all this and you, and you save it as a new module, you can go to edit module masks. And this is where you can create your own custom little conglomeration of, of footprints. So in this case, I had it grabbing the email and the, and the mobile phone and the office phone. And so under the email here, you can see I gave them an example of an email, but then I just used this section here. I didn't use regular expression. I just used this little this little model here of before, after. And so they give you the, the formula. You just have to put this thing that they give you here. And then in between the piping is where you put, uh, that's where you separate the data. And so all I did was I went to a, um, uh, let's open up a browser here. I just went to say, let, let's just go ahead and go to corporan.com since I already did this example. And under agents, we click on some agent. And then we just go to find uh, or uh, view page source. And then you can just do a control F and then look for the at symbol. Or how did I do it before? Let's try mail too. Yeah. And then you can see down here, ahrefs equals mail to, and then boom, there's the email right there. If you see where I'm waving my cursor here. And so I just told them to look, for, I just told the footprint to look for mail to. And then mail to colon, and then I did the piping and then I ended the quote. You see, and so everything in between mail to and the end of so I, well, it has the quote mail to colon and then I did the piping and then I ended it at the end quote. So everything between those areas is what it is, what it scrapes, which is exactly the email. So it's, it's pretty cool. And then for the mobile thing, I did basically the exact same thing, except I I found the area in the source and the page source that was just the mobile phone. And then the office phone was the same, except it was, you know, just the office phone. So it's it could be a lot more sophisticated in terms of how these footprints are arranged for this particular custom data grabber. But the cool thing was, you know, I was able to scrape all of these these real estate agents like this um, for somebody. Uh, and so you can you can make, you know, all kinds of modules to scrape. Uh, you know, a, a common, it's not just scrape. The thing about the custom data grabber is you can, you can 
you can incorporate multiple masks inside a, a single custom module. So you can scrape the email and, and other kinds of footprints all at the same time. So, you know, it's not just the email, right? Uh, and in some cases, maybe there's multiple emails, but actually the typical grabber will scrape mo multiple emails from a, any given page. I don't know if it shows, let's go grab emails by crawling sites. You have to check off this, use Harvester URLs. And here you can in include a custom user, user agent. I'm not really sure how to use this yet. I haven't looked into it. And you can include a depth. So the depth means that they'll scrape the, the emails on that page for that particular URL that you're giving them. But if you put it to depth two, it'll scrape that page and then all the URL, all the links on that page, Scrapebox will travel through. And then on the place where they land, they'll scrape all those at level two. So then at level three, you can imagine it goes further and further. You, you can get pretty deep. And this takes forever. I mean, scraping 100,000 whatevers, uh, it can take like a whole day. So I'm not sure I'm going to let this run. We'll see. We'll see how quickly it goes here. Just put this proxy retries to something high options. So you can't see the, the mask, uh, the mask in this uh, particular module that they've included export not completed data folder set filter here you can set this filter for keep these things and exclude these things you can do that in the custom uh data module thing also um delay no let's go ahead and start this and see how it does is this my this is my vps let me close this is this the this is the yeah this is the roofing thing so oh disappeared for a second let's let's give it a moment maybe it'll uh and by the way you can uh, you may you're probably aware of this that the the guys at scrapebox make this really clear that you can copy your scrapebox folder and you can have multiple instances of scrapebox open on your your pc that it's registered registered to so that's really useful because there are some things like this this uh, data grabbing module that consume the entirety of Scrapebox, so you can't use the other add-ons or or modules when you're uh, when you're using this particular thing. So sometimes I'll I'll uh, I'll have this other area open so that I can do like you know things where I'm cleaning data. Scrapebox is really useful for cleaning data. Also, I use it all the time for that purpose. Uh, but as you can see here, it's processed about a thousand URLs. It's already found about 700 emails and, you know, there's 60,000 in the pile. So at that rate, a thousand per, you know, what, 30 seconds or something like that. I don't know. I guess I could take like an hour, maybe. I'm just, I'm just guessing. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show you guys how to use the uh, internal email scraper and also to use the custom data uh, grabbing module to scrape emails in addition to other kinds of footprints. It's really, really useful feature. Um, and uh, I think uh, pretty uh, essential to uh, using Scrapebox. But uh, that's all I've got for you, for you guys. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye. Or don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you soon. Bye-bye.